Welcome back to Time Mechanic, the channel where we unravel the incredible stories behind the inventions and machines we often take for granted. Today, we're climbing aboard a real engineering marvel, the rack train. You might have seen these quirky little trains chugging up mountainsides on a vacation or in a travel documentary, but have you ever wondered what makes them tick? Or rather, what makes them climb? Rack trains have been around for over 150 years, tackling some of the steepest slopes on Earth yet they still feel like a hidden gem in the world of transportation. A huge thank you to our viewer, Alex, for suggesting this topic. You've inspired us to dig into something truly fascinating. So buckle up, figuratively, of course, and let's answer the big question. What makes Rack Train so special? Spoiler alert. There's a surprising twist about the world's steepest railway that'll blow your mind. So stick around for that. Okay, let's start with the basics. What is a rack train? Picture this. You're a train designer, and your boss says, build me a train that can climb a mountain. Regular trains would laugh or slip at the idea. See? Standard trains rely on friction between their steel wheels and the rails to move. That works fine on flat ground or gentle hills, but throw in a steep gradient, say, 10%, 20%, or even 48% and those wheels just spin like a cartoon character running in place. Enter the rack train, a clever twist on the railway concept. A rack train uses a special third rail, called a rack, that's lined with teeth. Think of it like a giant zipper running down the middle of the tracks. The train itself has a cog wheel, or sometimes multiple cogs, that mesh perfectly with those teeth. As the cog turns, it locks into the rack and pulls the train up. Step by step, no slipping allowed. This lets rack trains conquer slopes that would leave regular trains stuck at the bottom, huffing and puffing. We're talking gradients up to 48%, which is basically a wall by railway standards. Most regular trains tap out at around 4%. But it's not just about brute strength. Rack trains are all about balance and control. That cog system ensures a steady climb, whether they're hauling tourists up a scenic ridge or lugging heavy cargo in a mining operation. And here's a cool tidbit. There's not just one type of rack system. You've got the Riggenbach, which looks like a ladder, the Apt, with its double or triple teeth for extra stability, and even the Locker, which grips from the sides for super steep routes. It's like each engineer said, I can make this even better. We'll explore those differences in a bit. Trust me, it's worth the wait. Now, let's hop into our time machine and see where this all started. The story of rack trains kicks off way back in 1812, during the Industrial Revolution in England. Meet John Blenkinsop, a mining engineer with a problem. He needed to move tons of coal up steep hills from the Middleton Colliery to Leeds. Steam locomotives were the hot new thing, but on those inclines? Useless. The wheels would spin, the train would slide back, and the coal stayed put. So, Blenkinsop had a light bulb moment. Why not add a toothed rack rail and a cog wheel to grip it? His design debuted on the Middleton Railway, and it worked like a charm. It wasn't pretty. Think clunky, smoky, and loud. But it was the world's first practical cog railway, and it paved the way for everything that followed. Fast forward a few decades, and rack trains really hit their stride in the late 19th century. This was the golden age of tourism, especially in mountainous places like Switzerland. People wanted to see the Alps, but getting up there was a slog. Horseback or hiking only got you so far. Enter Niklaus Riggenbach, a Swiss engineer with a vision. In 1871, he launched the Vitznau Rigi Railway, the first mountain rack railway in Europe. His system used a ladder-like rack that the train's cog could grab onto, pulling passengers up to stunning views. It was a hit. Suddenly, mountains weren't just for explorers. They were for everyone. But the story doesn't stop there. Another Swiss genius, Roman Apt, took Riggenbach's idea and made it smoother and stronger. His Apt system, introduced in the 1880s, used two or three rows of teeth in the rack, distributing the weight so the train could handle heavier loads and steeper climbs without breaking a sweat or a rail. Then there's Edward Locker, who said, Steep? I'll show you steep. His locker system, debuted on the Pilatus Railway in 1889, used side teeth instead of top teeth, gripping the rack like a vice. Why? Because the Pilatus climbs a 48% gradient, practically vertical. 
Locker's design kept the train from tipping or derailing, and it's still in use today. Here's a fun twist. Rack trains were also pioneers in going electric. While flatland railways were still chugging along with coal and steam, many rack railways switched to electricity by the early 20th century. Cleaner, quieter, and more efficient, it was a no-brainer for mountain routes where refueling steam engines was a nightmare. So, how does it all work? Simple. Step 1. Lay down a rack rail with teeth, top, side, or both. Step 2. Fit the train with a cog wheel that matches those teeth perfectly. Step 3. Power it up, steam, electric, whatever, and watch it climb, steady as a mountain goat. It's engineering magic. So, where can you spot these engineering wonders today? Let's take a world tour. First stop, Switzerland, the rack train capital. The Pilatus Railway is the star here. Since 1889, it's been climbing Mount Pilatus with that insane 48% gradient we mentioned. It's the steepest rack railway on the planet, and riding it feels like you're defying gravity. The views? Unreal. Snow-capped peaks. Deep valleys. The works. Switzerland's also got the Jungfrau Railway, which tunnels through the Alps to the top of Europe at over 11,000 feet. These trains aren't just rides, they're time machines to untouched beauty. Next, hop over to the United States for the Mount Washington Cog Railway in New Hampshire. Opened in 1869, it's the world's first mountain climbing cog railway. It tackles a 37% gradient to reach the summit of Mount Washington, where winds can hit hurricane speeds. Talk about a wild ride. Then there's the Manitou Incline Railway in Colorado, another classic that's been hauling tourists up Pikes Peak since the 1900s. These American lines prove rack trains aren't just a European thing, they're global. Across the pond in Wales, the Snowdon Mountain Railway has been running since 1896, taking visitors to the top of Snowdon, the highest peak in England and Wales. It's a slower scenic climb, perfect for soaking in the rugged landscapes. But rack trains aren't only for mountains. In cities, they shine too. Check out the Opacina Tramway in Trieste, Italy a hybrid tram train that uses a rack to zip up steep urban hills. Or the Lion Metro in France, where Line C relies on a rack-assisted funicular to navigate the city's famously hilly streets. Even in Lisbon, Portugal, the Gloria funicular uses a rack-like system to connect downtown to the Barro Alto district. And don't forget industry. In places like South Africa or Chile, rack trains haul ore from mines up steep slopes where trucks would struggle. They're tough, versatile, and built for the long haul. Why do they matter? Rack trains bridge gaps, literal and figurative. They connect remote villages, boost tourism, and move goods where no one else can. Plus, with many running on electricity, they're greener than you might think. Next time you're near one, listen for that satisfying click-click of the cog. It's the sound of history in motion. All right, let's bring this journey to a close. Rack trains are more than just trains. They're a celebration of human creativity and grit. From John Blenkinsop's coal-hauling cog in 1812 to the sleek electric climbers of today, they've spent two centuries proving that no slope is too steep when you've got the right tools. They've opened up mountains to adventurers, cities to commuters, and industries to progress. And the best part? They're still evolving. Engineers are tinkering with hybrid systems, lightweight materials, and even steeper designs. Could we see a 50% gradient someday? I wouldn't bet against it. So, here's where you come in. Have you ever ridden a rack train? Maybe you've got a memory of the Mount Washington cog or a local line we haven't mentioned. Drop it in the comments. And if you're near one, look it up. There's probably a rack railway closer than you think. Oh, and tell us. What's another everyday wonder you want us to explore next? If this video got you hooked, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Rack trains remind us that the simplest ideas, like adding teeth to a rail, can change the world. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next climb.